So many, so many banknote videos that I haven't done. It's because I have too many coins. So anyway, hello people. My name is Glenn, and today I'm going to talk about the 1797 United Kingdom 1 and 2 pence coins. So, as you can see here, I have, well, the 1 and 2 pence coins. I actually have never seen a 2 pence coin, so I was curious if it actually existed. I've seen stats on, a, on the internet, on Numista, but really... Uh, no, just some things you can't find in reality because of the actual size. So, this is the largest bronze coin I actually had in the past. It's a Papal States by Biocchi. I actually love this coin, it's one of my favourite coins. But then I got these two coins. I didn't pay too much. And they're actually quite large. So, the smaller coin, so if I put them together... As you can see, the small coin is actually a one penny, and the large coin is actually a two pence coin. And these were issued in 1879, and they were issued as one ounce and two ounce. So this one is 28.35 grams, 36 millimeters in uh, circumference, um, diameter, and three millimeters thick. So that's three millimeters there, boys and girls. The two pence is 56.7 grams, 41 millimeters, that's 41 from there to there, to, from my thumb to thumb. And it's actually five millimeters thick, so if I put those together, there's three, and there is five. Mm. This is actually quite a heavy coin. And in contrast, this is the biggest coin in the United Kingdom now. So this is actually a two pounds from 2000. As you can see, it can fit in the middle. Uh, it's actually not as thick. And uh, if I put these two coins together, oh, whatever. So this coin is nothing compared with this tuppence coin. So tuppence is just two pence, and as you can see, it's got corrosion. So I read that these were actually reproduced from the dies in the 1840s, but I'm not too sure if this stuff is the actual corrosion on the die they were talking about. But from the looks of it, I'd say it's just corrosion on this coin, and as you can see, the coin's darkened up again, so the patina, patina means it's just rusting, and it is redeveloped again. So the curious thing is, is that in Australia, in the 1800s, they had a, a currency proclamation. And that was endeavoured by Philip King, who was governor of New South Wales at the time. And while it didn't mention a tuppence coin, the one pence coin was actually valued at two pence. And they actually done this to um, stop coins going out of the colony of New South Wales, which Australia was actually referred to at the time, because Australia was actually not a united country. So this tuppence coin would have equaled to four pence. And because the value of these is twice the value of anywhere else, like in the United Kingdom and Canada, these would have actually stayed in the colony. Because... If I was to buy four pence worth of stuff in Australia, or if I got this as changed as four pence in Australia and I took it back to the United Kingdom, I could only spend it as a two pence coin, which is um, a loss of value. So part of the proclamation, the export and import of any coins up Above five pounds that were copper shall be punishable by triple the value of the actual coins. So if I exported this, that would probably uh, find me 12 pence or one shilling. And I would have actually lost this coin as well. Not only that, they actually um, increased the value of uh, like Spanish dollars, uh, ducats, Indian rupees, 
then pagodas, Dutch gulders, um, Indian mohors, uh, half joannas, which, what would a half joanna, I think uh, that was a, huh. It doesn't doesn't say what a Johanna sounds like a Dutch coin actually. So anyway, let's go to the Dutch section. No, no. Ah oh, no, it's a Portuguese coin from Brazil. So what are the mintage of these coins? Well, these one pence coins were issued over a fuse with a frozen date. And combined, they had a mintage of 8,601,000. And the value of these is probably about, probably in this condition, probably about $30 to $40. So, but if you fish, look around, you can actually get them a bit cheaper. And in uncirculated condition, you're talking about thousands of dollars. So we won't even go there. And then we have this... Tuppence coin. This actually only had a mintage of seven hundred and twenty-two thousand one hundred coins, and the reason why that is because it was actually pretty, pretty. It's too big for circulation, so it would have taken too much effort to carry a lot of these coins around, and so they were demonetized in eighteen sixty-nine, in which these one pence coins were only demonetized in. 1971 with the uh, decimalization of the actual currency. So these coins are actually produced by Matthew Bolton using the steam press. So the steam press actually gave it this image. And modern coins use uh, some type of mechanical press in which uh, coins, you know, dated earlier would have used the mechanical press, I think, come around in 1650. And it was used on and off up until the Industrial Revolution, which they really had no choice but to introduce it because it actually sped up the minting process. And now, actually, these were actually introduced because the older copper coins were actually melted down and they were replaced with uh, lower metal content coins, so forgeries that had less metal content. So that would have actually gave the person who actually destroyed the real coins more value. And if they could actually produce more coins from a smaller amount of coins, they could have actually increased their wealth. And that's one way that actually people get rich. They take coins of a certain exchange rate, they go to another place that has a better exchange rate and exchange them there, and they take them back to the one that has the worst exchange rate which is a pretty good idea. Okay, and they actually have a collar. So they were made with collar and that actually gave it a round shape and actually kept the coin a unique, you know, equivalent thickness. So that was a good thing to do at the time. They have their copper in value, so really, they could have done the same thing, you know, melted it down and uh, reduce the copper content, even if they just take one millimetre off this, which is 20% of the actual metal content, that could have actually got away with producing fakes. And another thing that they actually done, they actually done a, um, a raised border. So this raised border here, so we're talking about the raised border there. This raised border is actually to protect the image that's inside from wear. As you can see, it's actually kept up pretty well. And it pretty much occurs on modern coins as well. And this is actually to protect the image from wear. But now it's just uh, pretty much a convention. And their ability to actually circulate coins through the economy is actually pretty good, so they can actually re take out the worn coins a lot quicker than, than uh, they used to. Like, like if you go to a third world country, you'll see that coinage is actually 
last in the uh, circulation for long periods of time. So this is what they're trying to prevent. So this is a wear on the, the entirety of the coin. This does have a border, but it's not as thick. And it didn't actually prevent wear on this coin. So that's actually what they were trying to do. You see the eagle is actually quite worn. So, if you look at the side, you see it has lots of nicks and um, damage. So if you drop this coin, it would actually get a lot damaged a lot easier. So it's another thing you need to look for. And you can tell because all of these lettering should have at least half a millimeter between the lettering and the edge. And as you can see, a lot of it is actually like this eye here. It's actually at the edge. It's because it's been damaged there. And the one is also at the edge. So there actually should be uh, should be like that eye out there. Bit of uh, space in between. But because you drop it, which this probably has been circulated quite heavily, you can see that the lettering is actually not uh, away from the edge, it's actually quite close. Here's uh, George III, the great, the uh, Gratia, by grace of God, King. And that's basically a simple motto that was actually on that coin. It's actually quite a nice coin. I'm going to keep these. I love them very much. And um, yeah, they're just a coin. If you're a UK coin collector, these are two that you have to get, they're called cartwheel pennies and cartwheel tuppence. And they are a staple of anyone's coin collection. It collects United Kingdom coinage, or if you collect Australian coinages, these are proclamation coins worth double the value and also worth getting because they are part of Australian history. But these two actually come from the United Kingdom. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll leave a link below to uh, Cartwheel Pennies. And maybe you'll get lucky and get a good coin for a pretty good value. So thank you very much. Have an awesome coin collecting time, people. Bye-bye.